Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Pleasure. Uh, do me a favor, give us your 30 second introduction. Who are you? What are you here? And sustainable ambassadorship. Perfect. Uh, my name is Nitin. Um, I'm from India. Been in Shanghai for about six years. Uh, originally an architect. Did my master's in uh, design management, whatever that means. Uh, but I came to Shanghai in 2010, uh, initially just to work in a company that focused on branding. Because from my background, I always talked about you know, doing things in a better way by communicating better. And that, and that was the time when I founded uh, Green Initiatives. Uh, it used to be called Green Drinks China. Uh, the initial awareness was just about creating education and awareness on environmental issues. But the way we've evolved in the last, uh, last seven, eight years, uh, we've gradually shifted our focus more and more uh, recently to creating uh, action-oriented projects which people can talk about uh, or, or take part in, sorry. But, so it's not just about learning something new, but it's about having the tools and, and the processes to engage in something that makes a change. Um, at the same time, uh, I also work with a company called Giga, where our focus is on creating healthy spaces through technology, through software, to data, and through certifications and standards. So at this point of time, um, I'm playing dual role. Uh, and for me, it's, it's great because it's, it's very, very complementary and it's very, very harmonious relationship because Green Initiatives focuses on CSR and community engagement, whereas Giga focuses on B2B professional services and making a positive difference through technology and data. And the reason I'm here simply is because, you know, I, I find that I have a lot of time and energy to do things that I may not have back at home. Back in India, I would be dealing with other issues. Uh, so I, I, I just feel that, you know, unlike most people who are here, I want to be here not just to make money. I mean, that was never the intention. The idea really is that we have the platform, we have the tools, we have the convenience, we have the community. Uh, I'd like to use that to do something more positive for, for the environment, whether it's for China, whether it's for the world, it doesn't matter. Just want to do something more positive. What is it about China that's so unique or so interesting or so important that you're, that you're here? Um, I, I think for me, initially, I, I came here just, just by accident. Um, I, I, I never intended to come to China, never intended to be here for six and a half years where I am right now. Um, initially, I just came here during the World Expo time, studying design management, uh, working in a branding studio, because my aim always had been to talk about issues in a more positive way through better communication. Uh, I think it just so happened that, uh, coincidentally for me, in 2010, until 2010, until the age of 28 or 27, I had never ever had a room of my own, you know, uh, ever. I mean, I always shared my rooms with my roommates, my sister, my, you know, my friends, whatever. And for me, it was a bit of an irony that being in Shanghai, one of the densest cities in the world, you know, I actually had my own room. But at the same time, when I walked around everywhere, um, I just felt that, you know, a lot of people didn't have that room, but it's not just room in terms of space, but it's also just information and ideas on the way everything around us was growing. You know, we were creating taller cities, we were creating better buildings, we were creating better infrastructure but somewhere we were losing touch with reality of our existence, which is, you know, live well and, and you know, uh, live in a healthy environment. And I somehow saw with the big push in Asia and in China about GDP, about globalization, about just economic growth and economic development, that somewhere we were missing a very, very important message, which was about, you know, can't we do it sustainably mm -hmm. in a way that, you know, takes care of the ecosystem around us. And I think somehow it, it a lot of, a series of incidents or, a series of coincidences just made me work on what I'm doing today. So what were your first steps to getting involved in sustainability? Because you just mentioned you're in branding, you're right. in kind of design. Right. Were you already in a mind space of environment, or did China catalyze you to think about it differently? I would definitely say it catalyzed it. Uh, I used to be an architect, like I said before. Um, back in my graduation days, my final year thesis was still around sustainability, which was 11 years ago a big thing for India and big thing for my school or my class. I was the only guy in a class of 40 whose project was you know, focused on sustainable concepts and sustainable design. And fortunately for me, it did really well at the national level and at the state level, and I got a lot of recognition. Uh, and that really opened my mind to, you know, this, this is supposed to be basic. The environment is what it is. It's a pretty horrible day outside, about right. 150, 180. Um, 
the Chinese people care about their environment and have has that changed in your time here? Absolutely. I mean, I, I remember uh, some of our first, like some of our earliest events in 2010 or 2011, we would have a group of maybe 60 people or 50 people, 80% of them would be foreigners. Mm -hmm. I think in the last two years, three years, we've seen an equal split, 50-50. You know, we have more and more Chinese people coming to our events. Uh, in the who, last who are these Chinese people? Are they, are they young? Are they more experienced? Yeah. Like, what's their background? I, I think that's, that's a key difference. Uh, I think it's hard to change habits of people who've already developed them for, for decades. Mm. Uh, but I think that's where you see a new energy, enthusiasm, and you know, intent to do something more about the, the mess they see around them. I'm not saying that every single person does it, but I've seen yeah. things evolving. I mean, I, I don't know which point was a historic or a milestone time, but for me, from my personal experience, I almost think that you know, 18 months ago or 20 months ago, at the time when Under the Dome released, I, I somehow see that as a as a breaking point where you know things started to get a bit more uh, out there for people to actually understand and realize that there's something wrong and we want to do more. I mean, our Chinese events we've done for the first time in seven, eight years. We've done our events completely in Chinese from starting from August, and the first three events have been completely full with about mm -hmm. 100 Chinese people or 90 Chinese people at these events. And that again was completely unheard of, unheard of seven years ago when we started that because we mostly had a foreign attendee mm -hmm. uh, audience. So I think things are definitely changing, but there's still a long way to go. Um, I think awareness is out there now. I think people are, in, you know, are, are increasingly engaging with it. But I think the key really as a path forward is that sustainability has to be broken down into smaller pieces. Um, I think for, for an average Chinese person, sustainability is too big a topic. Uh, it's about governments, it's about companies, it's about everyone else but them. Uh, and I think that's where we really have to split it down into smaller, simpler pieces uh, and make it more easy, convenient, accessible, affordable, <laughs> and it, it really has to be like a, the you know it has to be the go-to choice, yeah. not a special choice that they have to sacrifice more towards. And I think that really is the key. So I think the point starts now on how we get there and how we make that happen. And so how do you do that through green initiatives? I mean, you've got a lot of people who are showing up, so there's clearly interest. Right. Now your goal as an organization is to create engagement right. and then hopefully lead them to action. So right. tell me a little about like on the engagement side, right? what is it that you've really hammered on? Or what, what's a medium or a tool that you found like very effective to just create engagement, keep people coming back, right. and then deepen it overall? Um, I, I think uh, it's really a mix of few different things. I, I think on one part, education is absolutely super important, but it is not the only thing. If, you, if we rely mainly on education, we may not get too far. I think we really have to complement them with different kinds of initiatives. Mm. I mean, first of all, even when you educate, what are the topics? What does an average person connect with? What are the, what are the topics that are in, in, important to them? So I think it definitely starts with that. But um, after one point of time, they're gonna be like, hey, okay, now I know this, what do I do next? You know, and I, I think that's really the key right now. And I think that's why we're really working hard on, mm -hmm. because it uh, starts with education, but you really have to provide them with tools and you know, simple ways of engaging. And uh, we, we've been trying to do it in two ways. One of them is uh, we, we, we have an initiative called Impact Projects, which is really about long-term change uh, you know, in people's mindsets, uh, but that's really through concrete action. So if I'm talking about, hey, you know, there's a problem out there, we're trying to create long-term solutions to this problem. So our first project was on clothing recycling. Uh, you know, we've been working with a lot of companies on having boxes in various companies where people can you know, recycle their, their used items like clothing and shoes for recycling. And for every box that we place in a company, we go out there, we show them videos, we have discussions, we have debates, and we listen to them. We answer all their questions because transparency is the key. And a lot of times, you know, the local or the average Chinese person doesn't engage in a lot of charitable causes or environmental causes or NGOs because they have a little bit of skepticism. Like, where, does, where do these things go? You know, what happens to it? And is, I think, that, is that skepticism well placed or is it? I, I think it is. I think partly it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think we, if, if you look back at, at history, you know, I mean, last 10 years, I think there have been plenty of issues mm -hmm. that people have to be concerned about. Uh, I think the other issue is also that in general, uh, again, without meaning to offend anyone, but uh, I think if you look at a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations based in China or who are Chinese, I think the communication is not very strong. Like even for us, when we try to reach out to local Chinese organizations to, to engage with them or, or to or write them, write to them to work together, we never receive a reply. And I think that's where we really work very, very hard on the communication.
to make sure that everything that we do looks good, feels good, feels respected, and that mm -hmm. we have all the right, we have the answers to every question that people ask us. Yeah. So I think Impact Projects is one initiative. Uh, so we had clothing recycling, and then we, we also had an e-waste recycling project, so that's all ongoing right now. Uh, but something that we realized somewhere in between was education was too quick and easy because we do like two or three events every month. Projects like long-term impact projects were much more time-consuming. We launched one, one every year or every two years. And somewhere in between, there was a gap that we wanted to really fulfill. And that's when we started this new initiative about six months ago called Action Campaigns. Mm -hmm. And the idea of Action Campaigns was really to break down sustainability into small pieces. Specific action leading to specific change with specific impact and really showing people that, hey, due to one action of yours, this was the impact created, and now we have th a thousand people joining in this campaign, and this is the impact we created. So all you have to do is really just incorporate these into your daily lives. And these are very, very simple changes. The key idea is that the campaigns have to be so simple to engage in that people cannot not want to do it. Mm. Because again, like I said, sustainability has to be easy and convenient. Yeah. So our first campaign was Street Without Meat. Uh, the simple idea was that just by choosing a vegetarian meal, as opposed to a meat-based meal, you're saving 800 liters of water. So we're not telling people, hey, become vegetarian. We're just, just telling them that, hey, once in a while, when you go out with your friends, when you go out with your family, have a vegetarian meal. And if five of you together eat a vegetarian meal, you're saving 4,000 liters of water right there. Mm -hmm. And we ended up saving about 557,000 liters of water in two months of the campaign. And now we're focusing on the second uh, campaign, which is called Keep It Cup, which is, again, just about telling people that yeah. The simple idea is that why should you drink in a disposable cup when you're sitting in a cafe? I think for a lot of businesses and cafes, it's become very convenient that, hey, like I give them in a disposable cup, I throw it, I'm done yeah. with it. But it's not recyclable because for, for various reasons. Yeah. But the idea is that just by the simple action of asking them for a regular cup, you're already changing something because you're reducing waste. Yeah. So again, the idea is to have simple ideas like this that people can engage in uh, that really can make difference in the long run. Have you been following your people to figure out whether or not they're then scaling up their own actions in other ways through their job, through entrepreneurship, through starting their own NGOs? Like, are you tracking that far as well, or are you still just trying to keep track of your own pieces? Um, I think the, the the current issue is that yes, it's it's hard for us to track our own metrics, you know, yeah. because we are a very very limited team, completely vol volunteer run, no full time person. Uh, but we constantly get a lot of feedback from companies and and you know individuals in different mm -hmm. companies and and organizations that really just talk about you know how it's made a difference in their lives and how they're trying to change things. Just this morning, the first message that I saw when I woke up was you know, an intern who was with us for four months, she moved back to Hungary because she was from there, and now she's basically been selected for a Erasmus funding program mm. where she's basically now working on sustainable NGOs, like how can NGOs be sustainable, and she's starting her own social enterprise. So it, it made a difference to her because she was around the same time that we were running all these different projects. Mm. Uh, at the same time, we were at an event at Urban Hotel, and the ge general manager comes to me and tells me, hey, Nathan, look at this. All the food today is vegetarian for your event. Yeah. So I think people are really thinking That's and doing good. things. It's just that right now, we've not been able to measure the impact of our metrics way beyond our own organization. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, in the near future, we can, we can track more of these things. But we do see more and more companies wanting to adopt some of these campaigns. Like we had a meeting with a big financial company recently and they said that, hey, you know, we could probably adopt some of these campaigns and each mm. month we could actually have this campaign be for our employees yeah. because we're always looking for interesting ideas. I think, I think the, the scope is there, the opportunity is there, um, and I'm sure there's a lot of value in there as well. We just mm -hmm. have to follow up in the next stage. Is there a moment that you kind of think that there'll be a critical mass, like, the, like everyone will finally get it, or do you think that this really is just one off, one by one, really creating very simple actions that are catered to every single individual, every single organization. Like, what's going to be the change that you want to drive, or what's going to change that helps you really? Right. I, I think as an organization, we are dealing with our own issues, right? Mm -hmm. We're really, really too small to do more that we would like to. So, I mean, internally for us, the biggest issue really has just been to scale up. Yeah. Uh, to scale up and to really, uh, you know, increase the impact of our own uh, initiatives. Uh, but I think that said, with the limited team that we've had, we've been doing pretty decent with, mm -hmm. with the team that we have. And I think the next step is really to have a few full-time people who can just drive some of these programs. And what's holding you back from doing the full-time thing? Just cash, right? Just cash. <laughs> cash flow. Um, I mean, I think now we are at a point where we might finally be able to have our first full-time person next month. Mm -hmm. uh, we're already in talks with a couple of really, really interesting individuals uh, who want to be a part of the team. So I think that's great. But I think the key really is the, the cash flow, right? I mean, 
uh, we really are just trying to create projects that are more like social uh, business kind of projects that mm -hmm. basically are more sustainable in their own sense. And that takes time uh, because right now we have only two projects. Like yeah. Events and campaigns are, you know, they're, they're mostly community engagement uh, stuff, but they're not really something that, that can really fund an organization to, you know, have uh, employees. But I think our, our projects, like the e-waste recycling project mm -hmm. and a new project that we're launching next month, I think this is really great because the kind of success we've seen with the V project in the last six months has been as much or more than the previous project we had done for like almost a year and a half. Mm. So I think that is incredible. Yeah. So that's why now we are working on launching our next project in December and we already have a few sponsors confirmed to it and okay. probably we'll go, we'll go uh, official in January. Cool. But I think uh, that's great. Um, we also, I, I think one thing that has changed for us is in the last six months, I think ever since our last interview, yeah. we've had so much of attention. I don't know for what reason or how, but people just reach out to us and say, hey, we want to work with you. Hey, can we use your logo for this? Hey, can we use your thing mm. for that? I, I think that's great, but that's why we have to be really, really careful on how we work. But I think for us, it's, it's, it's good to know that we've reached a point now after like seven years or eight years that people see us as valuable for their brands. Mm. And I think this is something which we're going to try to do for next year. Yeah. How can we really use the value that we've created in seven years, you know, really to bring in some revenues that can, you know, support a full-time team. Yeah. The other things that we've been really, really thinking of doing next year is really just focusing more on Chinese companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really don't need to work with like two or three companies that pay us a million, but I'll, I'd be really, really happy if we work with 100 Chinese companies or 100 companies in general who pay us 10,000 RMB a year. Yeah. Because then we reach that critical mass, and for us the critical mass is to reach as many Chinese people as possible. Right. Uh, and a lot of these uh, companies are fairly decently educated uh, employees. And I think that's where we, we think we can make a bigger difference. We really can't make a lot of difference for someone working in a restaurant or yeah. someone just out there, you know, selling, you know, a vendor there. But I think even if we can start reaching out to people in these companies, you know, uh, you know, employees in these companies and engage even a small percentage of them, mm -hmm. I think we have, you know, a lot more uh, chances to make lasting impact. Sure. So, I, th th so that's the idea behind really <coughs> creating smaller projects in the near future mm -hmm. to work with more companies, local and international, for a very small amount of money yeah. and be able to really work with a lot of different companies. Yeah. So that's basically our idea for the next year uh, okay. and really work on, uh, you know, reaching that. Um, turning this back to you a little bit, I mean, you know, you've been working on this for the last five, six years, yeah. you've been, like, talk me through a little bit some of the challenges of getting to this point, like, right. personally, like, right. I see you've got some gray hair, so <laughs> you've clearly been working on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what have been some of the challenges personally um, for you to get this for, for you to like just keep momentum as you had this vision right. to execute on it I, I think for me the key thing I always say is that you know um, I've, I, I've never ever seen the, the bigger picture you know mm. I, I, I've always just focused on the next three months or the next five months or the next six months mm. or at the most the next one year I think today is for the first time I'm talking about what we intend <laughs> to do next year you know but I've never really been that the strategic thinker you know, who knows what the future is and, you know, who knows how far to go and how to get there. My, okay. my strength has always been that, you know, at times I, I have an idea or, mm -hmm. you know, we work together as a team and we come up with an idea and I think it's really powerful and we just put everything into making that happen. Mm. Uh, so I think it's, I've, I've mostly been like that. So I think having that kind of strategic thinker or, you know, someone who can really help you plan the next stage, next stages of your growth. Uh, that is, I'm, I'm, I'm not that kind of person, so it's been challenging from that perspective. But um, uh, I think we've had a really, really good team of volunteers. For, but for, I would say just talking about challenges, the, I think the key issue really has been also to work with volunteers. Mm. I mean, everyone has full-time jobs, everyone has commitments. For everyone, it's not really a priority. Mm -hmm. So working with volunteers is a big challenge. Uh, switch, you know, balancing between two jobs, it's a real challenge. I mean, <laughs> I have probably 90% of the white hair on my head is a result of last, uh, you know, two years, mm. uh, managing two jobs. I mean, it looks good, don't worry about it. it <laughs> <laughs> Makes me look wiser. Uh, so I, I think that the challenge is definitely there, you mm. know, doing between two jobs and not being able to focus only on one thing. Yeah. In an ideal scenario, I would love to, but I just love both my jobs a bit too much, mm. you know. So sure. I, I really don't want to take sides right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, that's definitely a challenge. Uh, the other challenge is also, of course, personal finances, right? I've been here for six, six years. And if I tell people how much I earn right now, you know, it, would, it, it wouldn't sound like a lot, but like, uh, again, you know, money has never been my, uh, you know, it's never been my, my thinking. Mm. Uh, I know that my dad has this one piece of land back in India. If nothing else works, I'll go there and do farming or I'll just sell it off and do something else. <laughs> so I have that little bit of luxury to fall back into. But um, 
I, I think uh, personal finances have always been a challenge. I've done photography in the past. I've done Airbnb. I've done couch surfing. I've done consulting on small, you know, web-based projects. Mm. I've done like freelance stuff here and a freelance stuff there. Yeah. I've done all kinds of stuff to just make sure that you know the the bills are paid for on a yeah. monthly basis. So uh, yeah. Okay. So then I'm gonna take a different way. So you amass all this great experience. You've built one organization. Really, you you rebrand it. You launch it yourself. Um, you've been working with another group called Giga, obviously, right. as, as an employee. Right. Um, how does this play into maybe your, I mean, if you don't think any, beyond three to six months, what about your own career path? I mean, is this, is this a, been a great career milestone you can, you can step up, or are you really thinking, I'm going to be in China long term anyway, so it's just one more thing? Um, I, I, for sure, I'm not going to be here forever. Mm. Uh, so, but again, like I said, <laughs> I, I've never really focused on a career path. Uh, I, I think ever since I started doing these things, I just realized the fact that things were growing, and the fact that the environment was in such danger, I always knew that, you know, the experience is going to be valuable, mm. because how many people have had the chance to, you know, grow a, like a almost like a monthly chapter of thirty people into an organization with like ten volunteers working with like twenty or thirty different companies. So I, I think that is a really really valuable experience in itself. At the same time, with Giga, uh, you know, I've had really like a really really strong platform and backing up. Uh, you know, I, I think it, it's so important to have a good boss, you know, a good leader that you can be inspired from and, you know, learn from. And I think I have been really, really lucky to be working with Giga from that perspective because I have a lot of flexibility and free hand to either do this or that or do both or do nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's it comes so, down so much to, to people management and leadership and trust. And I think this is one of the challenges that I forgot to mention that I think even doing these things for seven years, the biggest challenge really has been finding good people to work with yeah i think finding good people is not difficult but finding good people to work with for a long period of time with very little money i think that's <laughs> a difficult thing and i think that's the difficulty yeah. of most entrepreneurs now, when you don't have them do you do you feel that you've really been limited by that fact or is it you just keep work, or you yourself have to work harder you just have to work harder okay yeah i think you just have to work harder and i think for me that's why i think i, I value so much the relationship with my full-time job mm -hmm. uh, because i have a lot of flexibility and there are times when i go for a, for a meeting with giga and i end up you know, subconsciously selling green initiatives, yeah. and I go for a meeting for green initiatives, and subconsciously end up selling Giga, mm. and it's 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 perfect because it works for both the companies, yeah. and you know there's there's value for both organizations, and mm. it really really gives me a lot of um, you know like psychological security to be doing you know Giga as my full time yeah, yeah. job sure. as well. Yeah. Sure. Um, so what keeps you passionate about this? Like, a lot of people get overwhelmed by the severity of the environmental challenge and kind of like duck in right, right. Uh, what what keeps you passionate what keeps you going after so many years uh, I, I think it's definitely getting more and more challenging to be very honest uh, a lot of times when I you know walk in the streets and I see someone selling Jiaozi or Shalong Pao and I'm like you know could we ever do these things in a better way when I see look at when I look at people packing stuff in a styrofoam box and you know <laughs> people wasting food yeah. at a at a restaurant with like tons of Chinese uh, sorry ton of like disposable plastic boxes I, I do feel I do get disheartened mm. but then I come back and I go turn on the computer and I see my inbox which has like 80 or 90 emails unanswered and then I, I just get into them and you know I think all the negative energy does not even come in you mm. know I think for me I would say the key is that I just never have time to focus on the negatives okay because if I start focusing on the negatives then you even the positive, yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. like a spiral like you say yeah. so I, I think in general I, I'm, I'm an optimist uh, mm. that helps in general I I really really try to stay away from negative energy that helps as well and the third thing is that I just stay super focused and busy yeah. and I think when you're busy you don't really have time for nonsense you know you just yeah. focus on things that need to get done rather than things that cannot be done right and, right. and that really helps I think okay then I guess another question I have is then how do you see the future like you're an ambassador in many ways how are you helping to drive the same thing through other people is that is that a goal of yours to have like five or six disciples who are out there as well um, I, I, I think the I think I, I don't know if it's a goal or not but I'm, but I'm constantly just trying to ensure that you know we have more people who are more empowered with the right information mm. the right tools the right network so they can go in and do their own stuff you know I, I think we all need to do our bit and I mean all the more I think we have to have more and more people you know more Chinese people more and more local people who really believe in what is really important and you know and and be a part of it and it, so yeah. it's, it's never really about one person I think but that one person really can help pass information to all these other people you know that have been working with them yep. so I think as an individual you have to be really really honest 
you have to be passionate which is really really important people see it through you and you have to be capable of motivating people and inspiring people because again people see through you and if you're doing it for the wrong reasons if you are just doing it for pr if you're just doing it for i don't know whatever you know not the best reasons people see through you and they're not inspired is there one issue that you are personally passionate about worried about that you feel is the most critical going forward in this big theme of sustainability i would say leadership and management education i would say i think i think even now after all that happened with the financial crisis <laughs> all that's happened around the world with all kinds of businesses mm -hmm. i still feel and i still you know i just feel terrible that sustainability as a concept has come out so late you know yeah. i mean it it it's it is a basic you know piece of existence right it should always be a part of whether it's primary education middle education high school university management mm. what leadership what not i think sustainability and not just environmental sustainability social sustainability and you know ecosystem development uh, inspiring people through you know positive change i think mm -hmm. these are important things a lot of times why we see a lot of the problems around us is because we see people in government positions or in you know in big corporate positions who don't care you know we yeah. have people in leadership positions of the biggest countries in the world you know who don't believe in it and i think it starts with education and i think we really have to continue to emphasize, emphasize on you know the very basics in in education do you think that the generations are getting this better like do you see that in through your own work that maybe the boomers have got the least and yeah. you know are you seeing that even in your own groups uh, i would say more so than the previous generation for sure but mm. still not enough okay um, and i think that's where i see it's it as it uh, education on uh, entrepreneurship as a huge opportunity mm. um, i think the the current generation are really definitely much more informed they have a lot more tools if you go to any of these schools around shanghai uh, you know to begin with you see a really amazing bunch of kids uh, you know access to information and talking about topics that i did not even speak at 17 so yeah. i i think definitely they have the right tools but we just have to make sure that they you know somewhere along the way they don't go down you know mm. the less the, the you know the commonly chosen path you yeah, have to sure. make sure that they go on the right path and we keep having right content or right information to continuously guide them you know to the right path so mm. it's, i think leadership is going to be really important going ahead in the future as well and i think i think for people like you and me and you know everyone in this room i think it's our job and responsibility to ensure that you know we 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 can ensure that